Hi, um, I am going to introduce to you the muscles of the body. This is a daunting task. There are lots of muscles in the body. I've done some introductory videos about the skeleton. Hey, there's only 206 bones and most of those are duplicated. That's easy. But there are a lot of muscles. So um, I have to be selective in what I talk about. Otherwise, we'll be here for literally dozens of hours. Um, so I'm going to, we'll start at the top, head, neck, consider the trunk, the back, and then look at the limbs, think about the joints, think about how the muscles are grouped, the actions that they do, um, and try to be very introductory and not get carried, carried away. We'll start up here with the head. Um, there are muscles of the scalp, but these are the muscles of facial expression that you use for moving your lips and closing your eyes and making expressions here. These are all skeletal muscles that you can control. And that's an important thing. While I'm introducing the muscles of the body, I'm introducing the skeletal muscles, the, 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 the muscles that we can think about moving and move, muscles that move the skeleton. There are other muscles. There are smooth muscle within organs and blood vessels and what have you, which I'm not going to talk about, which we don't think about, that we can't control, they're under autonomic control. And the muscle of the heart, the cardiac muscle, that's also under autonomic control. So we're thinking about skeletal muscle. Um, the other muscles of the face are the muscles of mastication. This is masseter here. These move the jaw in different directions so that we can chew. Uh, they're distinct from the muscles of facial expression, not just because of their role, but also their innovation. Uh, we actually have some fairly good muscles that can move the ear but you need to practice quite a lot to be able to move your ear, but you can do it. Now, as we move around posteriorly, because we are upright bipedal animals, this has all evolved quite differently to other animals. And a lot of the muscles here are important in keeping our, well, keeping our head up so we can gaze forward. Um, with modern living, sat at computers, if you have a bad posture, the head's a very, very heavy thing. So these muscles are quite strong in holding the head up. So if we have bad posture, if we're looking down a lot or in an awkward position, these muscles can get fatigued, overused and very tired. Um, so there are a number of muscles under here. Um, and the other thing about muscles is that we need to consider what joints they cross when we think about what actions they might perform. And some of these, so these, um, these muscles of the neck up here, we'll consider when we look at the muscles of the back in a moment, there are also some splenius muscles. Splenius means bandage, they wrap around the other muscles. But there are also muscles of the neck, like these scalene muscles here, that run between the vertebrae and the ribs. So they can lift up the ribs. When you take a deep breath, you'll feel these muscles contract in your neck as they're helping lift the rib cage up and helping you inhale. There are two muscles of the neck that I would like to point out though. This one here is sternocleidomastoid. This is the mastoid process here, posterior to the ear. This is the clavicle, that's the clido bit, and the sternum is here, so sternocleidomastoid. It's a superficial muscle, it's very prominent, it stands out. It's involved in um, if, you use, if you use both sides together, you flex the neck, you bring the chin towards the sternum. If you use them individually, then they're involved in rotation. The other big muscle is this one here, trapezius. Now trapezius, so here we can see trapezius, here it's been removed. But if you had the two trapezius muscles, it would make a trapezium shape. Now trapezius is a very interesting muscle. It's a superficial muscle of the back but it's also a muscle of the upper limb. Um, so this is the back, it's superficial, it's covering the other muscles of the back. It runs up to the neck, so it's important in holding the head up. It runs out to this bone here, this is the scapula, um, and to the clavicle. So it's involved in moving the scapula. Now the scapula's job is to support the upper limb. So if we have a muscle that moves the scapula, then 
it's moving, supporting, stabilizing the upper limb. It has a role in the upper limb. And then it also runs down here to the back and we have different fibers running in different directions. And we'll see this in a number of muscles. Some muscles are very straightforward and they're just long things and they contract in one axis and that's it. But some muscles have fibers running in different directions. So different parts of a muscle can contract independently of the other parts and cause different actions. Uh, so that's trapezius. These are the deeper muscles of the back here. Hmm, the back. We have many vertebral bones forming the vertebral column, the back. Each one of those vertebrae can move relative to the next vertebrae. And we join up all those little movements and we can make quite big movements. And there are multiple layers of back muscles. So the very superficial muscles of the back are actually involved, as I say, in the upper limb. Look here, if you take trapezius off, you can see the rhomboids. The rhomboids link the scapula to the vertebrae, so they can, you can squeeze your shoulder blades together, you can retract your scapulae with your rhomboid muscles. We have muscles here running from the vertebrae to the ribs, so they're involved in moving the ribs, helping you push air out. There's a, um, this is serratus posterior, uh, inferior, there's another deep set deep to these guys up here, which is serratus posterior superior, um, which lift the ribs up. So these muscles are either lifting the ribs and helping you bring air in or <sighs> pulling the ribs down and helping you push air out. So we have muscles that move the ribs relative to the vertebrae. And then we have this band of muscle here, this, this intermediate layer. And this is the erector spiny muscle group. You can probably palpate this on your own back. Erector spiny. So this erects the spine. So if you're bent over, these bands of muscle help lift you back up again. And whilst that is a group of muscles, it has individual muscles or muscle bands running from different parts of the back to other parts of the back. They're the ribs and other parts of the back. So it gets broken up into muscles of many, many, many different names. Uh, and then, and this extends up into the neck. And then when you take off that intermediate group of muscles, you find the deep muscles and there are muscles in between the vertebrae. Um, there are deep muscles and deeper muscles and very, very deep muscles and lots of little muscles. There are lots of muscles in the back. And the deeper muscles are very small, they run between vertebrae, and they probably have a more proprioceptive role, sensing where each vertebra is relative to the other vertebra, and giving, you, um, giving your brain information about that, and maybe giving you pain if the vertebra is being pulled inappropriately and causing you to stop moving your back and lie on a firm surface. But it's these larger muscles here, these larger superficial muscles that are probably moving the back. And also, oh yeah, these muscles. The trunk is made out of muscles and bone, but muscles. So um, if you wanna make a nice strong container to keep all your organs in, muscles are a pretty good building block. In the thorax, we see the ribs and we see layers of muscle in between, the intercostal muscles. And the main function here, sure, those intercostal muscles can pull on the ribs and move them, but the main purpose of those intercostal muscles is to form a pressure barrel, a wall, so that the lungs inside can be moved by the muscles and the bones. You can change the volume inside the thorax, and if you increase the volume inside the thorax, you decrease the pressure, air is drawn in through the airways. And if you <sighs> decrease the volume inside the thorax, you push the air out. And what we can't see here, um, if I took this off, you'd find the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is also a skeletal muscle, and it's a dome inside here. Do I want to take... There it is. Here's the diaphragm, this dome up here. Um, and this is a skeletal muscle. You can choose to control it, and if you contract it, it flattens, it pulls down. All this squishy stuff gets pushed out, but the volume here increases, and the 
lungs fill with air. So the diaphragm is also a skeletal muscle. And as we continue, inferior to the ribs and down to the pelvis, that's all covered with muscle. So the body wall is made up of mostly three layers of muscle. We have three layers of intercostal muscle, three layers of abdominal muscle. Out here, you see how these fibers are running in this direction. We have the external oblique muscles. And then deep to that, we have the internal oblique muscles. Their fibers are running in the opposite direction. And then deep to that, you have a third layer of muscle, transversus abdominis, whose muscle fibers run in that direction, run transversely. And then in the midline, we also have the six pack. We have rectus abdominis running from the pelvis up to the sternum and the, the inferior ribs here. Um, and when I said that, the big muscles move the back. Well, these are big, strong muscles. And these, the directions the muscle fibers run in means that you can move your torso, right? If you're moving your torso, you're moving your vertebrae. So the abdominal muscle wall is important at holding your viscera in, at resisting the intra-abdominal and intra-thoracic pressure changes, and also in movement of the torso. Um, down in the pelvis, there is a pelvic floor. So um, the levator ani muscle group and then also support all of this inferiorly with the pelvic floor muscles, also skeletal muscles. So you can, you can contract your pelvic floor, right? You can choose to do that, so it's skeletal muscle. Um, now, that's most of the torso muscles, but now we can see the, the limbs are hanging from this. We mentioned the scapula back here. Um, let me go this way around. If I take the arm off, you can see this muscle here. This is a, um, it has a serrated appearance, this muscle, because it has lots of slips of muscle attaching to the ribs. And this is serratus anterior goes along with this serratus posterior muscle. Now serratus anterior is a big beefy muscle running from the ribs to the scapula. So it's also involved in moving the scapula, rotating the scapula, um, protracting the scapula around the body wall, but also it can pull on the ribs. It's a big muscle that can pull on the ribs and help you breathe if you hold on to something, if you fix these bones in place with your upper limb. Big muscle here, latissimus dorsi. So this big, it's a back muscle, runs around laterally. It's coming from fascia and bones and vertebrae here, and it runs around to the humerus. Uh, and this is the, um, the climber's muscle. This is the swinging around in trees muscle. This is the muscle that lets you do a pull up. It's so big because you can lift your body weight with the pair of these working together. If you're really strong and you can do a one-arm pull-up, then you just need one of them, but not many people can do that. Latissimus dorsi. So you can see how we've got muscles of the back, which are very much muscles of the upper limb. Serratus anterior, latissimus dorsi. If I put the arm back on. Okay. Um, here's pectoralis major. So this is a major muscle of the chest but it's actually a muscle of the upper limb. It's running from sternum, clavicle, out to the humerus. This is a muscle that's gonna, um, well. <laughs> See, we're getting into the weeds already. The pectoralis major can adduct the humerus and rotate the humerus. That's another thing we need to think about with bones. When we have like a ball and socket joint, like we have at the glenohumeral joint, the humerus can rotate, right? Um, and the way the muscles attach to the bone will determine whether they can take part in that rotation and how they might take a part. Pectoralis major, take that off and you see pectoralis minor running from the ribs up to the tip of the shoulder. Um, so if trapezius, you can use to shrug your shoulders, pectoralis minor, you can use to pull the tip of your shoulders back down again. Talking of trapezius, 
So you, we keep coming back to some of these major muscles, but um, here's trapezius. You see how these fibers are running from the axial skeleton, from that vertebral column, out to the scapula and the clavicle. And then we have this muscle. This is the deltoid muscle. Look, it's got lots of groups of fibers running in slightly different directions. It's a multi-pennate muscle. And then the humerus, the lower limb, is attached to the deltoid muscle. And what we've got is we've got this suspensory arrangement then. The limbs are quite heavy. The upper limb is, is a heavy thing. Um, so the weight of the limb is suspended largely through the deltoid muscle. There are other muscles involved up to these bony points, and then the weight is transferred through trapezius up to the axial skeleton. Can you see that? That suspension arrangement. So the deltoid muscle will move, you know, it'll um, abduct, uh, flex, extend the humerus of the glenohumeral joint. But its other big job is actually holding that joint in there together. When you're carrying something heavy, it's holding that upper limb into the scapula. Deep to all of that, if you take deltoid off, well actually there's deltoid there, but you have um, the rotator cuff muscles, so uh, smaller, deeper muscles running from the scapula to the humerus, helping us rotate the humerus, but also helping hold that joint together, helping, helping stabilize the joint when we do things like this, when we stick our arm out, when we do these movements that we take for granted. Um, there's deltoid, and then of course we move out to Uh, the upper limb itself. So if that's the shoulder joint, here's the elbow joint and there's the wrist. On this side, the anterior side of the arm, the brachium, we have elbow flexors like biceps. Um, and then deep to that we have brachialis and coracobrachialis. And if they cross the elbow joint, then they can flex the elbow. Um, and they're also crossing the shoulder joints. They're also taking part in movements of the humerus relative to the shoulder joint. And then on the other side, uh, we have the triceps muscle. So because the elbow is a hinge joint, the muscles on this side flex the hinge joint and the triceps brachii muscle on this side extends the hinge joint. And as we move past the elbow, everything gets a lot more complicated. Um, we have muscles that are running to the fingers that give us the power of grip. So most, many of the muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm, forearm give us the power of grip. Um, but with the forearm, we can also pronate and supinate, pronate and supinate. So we have a number of muscles involved with that, including biceps, actually. And then we have muscles that are running to the wrist. So not only do we flex our fingers, but we also flex the wrist. So we have flexors of the wrist, the, the carpi muscles. And then when you get into the hand, these muscles are also important. They're smaller, but these are the muscles that give us the dexterity that we take for granted. Uh, these little muscles in here, the, the thumb has its own set of muscles. The, the thumb is very special, very useful for us with various forms of grip. But those other little movements of the hand, of the fingers that we use, we're using the muscles in the forearm, but we're also using the small muscles in the hand to give us that fine dexterity. And if we have muscles on this side doing those jobs, then we have muscles on the opposite side. So these muscles will extend the wrist, extend the fingers, and so on. So that's the upper limb. With the lower limb, we have the hip joint, we have the knee joint, and then the ankle and the foot. Um, and these muscles are very big. They're big because they're supporting most of the body weight when we're walking, when we're getting up from a chair, when we're going up steps, when we're running, jumping, whatever. So these muscles are much larger. And when we walk, with every step that we take, we stand on one leg. So a number of these muscles have to support us while we're stood on one foot with every step that we take and keep the pelvis level to give us that efficient gait that we use. So these muscles are big. So the hip joint is a ball and socket joint. Now in this anterior compartment of the thigh, the, the big muscle bulk 
is the quadriceps femoris muscle group. And most of that muscle only crosses the knee joint. This is the patella. And the patella is a sesamoid bone in the tendon of that muscle. And the tendon inserts into the tibia here. So this muscle extends the knee joint, which is a hinge joint. You go from a flexed knee to a straight knee uh, with the, 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 rectus, with the uh, quadriceps femoris muscle group. Now one part of that, this midline part here, the rectus femoris muscle, also crosses the hip which means that it can act at the hip and at the knee. So you can flex the hip, that is raise your knee towards your chest using rectus femoris and quadriceps then extends the knee from a bent position. We also see sartorius here um, uh, and then there are some other bits and bobs. Now the medial compartment, these muscles in here, these are the adductor muscles. There are a number of adductor muscles, the big one being magnus, the long one being longus, the short one being brevis. Um, and those adduct the lower limb at the hip joint. And that is, so if you adduct, you bring the lower limb back to the body. If you abduct, you take the lower limb away from the body. So the abductors, sorry, the hip adductors bring the legs back together. Gracilis is in there as well. And if we turn around and we see the hamstrings here, this is the posterior compartment, we have a pair of muscles here, semitendinosus and semimembranosus, and biceps femoris laterally. These muscles also cross the knee and the hip joint, so they can extend the hip joint that is, take the lower limb out behind you, or if your hip is flexed, that is your knee is out in front of you, then these muscles, these hamstring muscles can bring the lower limb back to an extended position. And then it can also flex the knee joint. So if these muscles shorten, you'll bring your heel up to your butt. You'll flex the knee joint, bend the knee joint. So those are the hamstrings. And then we have the gluteal region. So. This muscle here is gluteus maximus, big muscle, um, and it's running across the hip joint, and it's also a powerful extensor of the hip. So if you're sat in a chair and then you stand up again, when you're sat in the chair, your hip is flexed, and then when you stand up, you'll use gluteus maximus and the hamstrings to extend your hip joint and get up from that chair. And then from the knee joint to the ankle joint, we again have uh, muscle compartments. We have this posterior compartment, this lateral compartment, and this anterior compartment. And we're moving the ankle joint. So to lift the toes towards your shin would be uh, dorsiflexion. This is the dorsal foot, the dorsal surface. To stand on your tiptoes would be plantar flexion. And we can see that it's these muscles back here, these muscles of the posterior compartment. We can see gastrocnemius. Deep to that, we have soleus. So those are plantar flexors that cross the ankle joint and attach to the heel. The calcaneus bone here is sticking out to give a mechanical advantage to the ankle joint, which is a little bit more anterior. Um, so these are big muscles that we can use to stand on tiptoes, to lift our entire body weight, to stabilize the foot when we're walking, to stabilize the foot on uneven ground and uneven surfaces. Um, and deep to those muscles, we have muscles that run around um, the arches of the foot and run into the sole of the foot, which will, um, like the muscles of the forearm, flex the toes, flex the big toe, and help us with our stability on the ground and also stabilize the ankle joint. Uh, inversion is to bring your sole so it's facing inwards. Eversion is to bring the sole of your foot so it's facing outwards and those muscles that pass medially will help with inversion. That's the posterior compartment. The anterior compartment kind of does the opposite. Uh, so these muscles are running across the ankle um, so they will help with dorsiflexion, bringing your toes to your shins, and also extending your toes. So if your toes are flexed, then the muscles in the anterior compartment, like extensor digitorum longus, will help extend the toes.
And then also um, muscles there are crossing the ankle joint and help, will help with inversion. And then that lateral compartment, we have the fibularis muscles because the fibular bone is out here. And those fibularis muscles are, are running around the ankle laterally and will help with eversion. All of those muscles are working together to help stabilize us as we're stood over that foot on a maybe less than perfect surface. But even if it is a flat surface, you know, it's like you stand on, on, on one foot, one legged, right? A little bit wobbly. It's, it's all of these muscles working together to balance us and stabilize us. And then when we get into the foot, just like in the hand, there are a lot of small muscles which help with fine movements of the toes, which are maybe less important to us than the fine movements of the hand, which are so important for day-to-day -day living. Um, and then in the sole of the foot, there are layers, layers of muscles supporting all of this. Ooh, okay. That was a lot of muscles. How's that? That's an introduction to the skeletal muscles of the human body. There are a lot. They do a lot of things. They cross a lot of joints. There's a lot of detail in there. The innovation's important. The blood supply's important. If you want to know more, uh, I have many more videos in more detail about individual parts, but I hope, I hope that was a useful warm-up. Speaking of warm-ups, don't know if you can hear, but it sounds like the, uh, the freshers party is starting to warm up. Students are coming back. It's that, that time of the year where we introduce students to new knowledge. <laughs> right, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>